Brandy Denise, ladies and gentlemen. Um, welcome to the Rhodes Library. Oh, hi. Hello. This what, is a library. What do you think? I think it's very unique and um, I couldn't read these many books, but I like that you did. I like you were telling me, because we just did the Comedy Cellar in, in Vegas last week. Mm -hmm. And you told me you were into all those Harry Potter books. Like when they came out, you were reading them. Oh, so yeah. how old were you when those books were coming out? Oh, I don't want to tell my age like that. But um, <laughs> I, it started when I was in high school. Uh, I remember even being in college when the, the, the later books came out and going to the Tallahassee Mall and standing in line at Barnes & Noble at like 9.30 in the morning. Cause it opened at 10 and um, they don't do that anymore. Barnes, the Barnes and Noble doesn't really exist anymore. There's, there's one left at the Grove. One, exactly. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know, on Fairfax over here and um, the people sleep out for like new Supreme clothing. Oh yeah. Out. For the clothes they definitely do. I see them. I but isn't that, you know, chairs. that's interesting. It is. Cause I would never sleep outside on the sidewalk to give somebody $800 for a t-shirt. But you'd stand in line in Tallahassee at the mall to get the next for a twenty three dollar book. Absolutely, <laughs> gotta enrich your mind. What exactly? What uh, what book was that? The one that I stood in line. The one I remember specifically. I want to say it might have been Goblin of Fire. I think it was book four. What did you most get out of those books? Um, just fantasy fiction. Um, I think I have an imaginative mind, and so it was cool to just read that. I don't even know how I came across that because I was never into, um, what's the, 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 the Lord of the Rings? I didn't, yeah. I didn't read all of those either. I don't know what it was about Harry Potter and stuff, but the, the witches and the, the magic, that's what really got me in. That's what I like about like fiction books and also like animation. It's, there's no limitations on what you can do. The fact that they could walk through walls and end up, you know, in, in, a, in a Hogwarts school. It's like, oh, that's cool. Now, you spent a lot of your young life in Florida, and I remember in Florida, mm -hmm. super religious people saying those books um, promoted witchcraft. For sure. So how come you're not a witch? You read those books. I am a witch. <laughs> I, am. <laughs> I absolutely am a witch. But no, um, that was a thing. I remember, yeah, they were protesting it. People yeah. just really need to find other things to do. It's a child's book. Yeah. They're talking about casting spells on you know, they're the, the fake neighbor next door, like literally is probably somebody in your house committing a real crime right now. Like, relax. I was, you know, I'm, I'm older. I'm, I remember the sensation and I remember the, the Twilight books that was I a, read those a, a too. sensation. Yeah. Uh, I'm Team Edward. Which, which are you? Jacob. Okay. I think if you, Edward was like very, very, um, I mean, you got to think about it. Um, she was younger. Edward was in his hundreds. He was manipulating her because why would you let this young girl who has her whole life ahead of her become a vampire, even bring her into that world, put her in those dangerous situations? The cool clothes? The cool clothes, I guess. But yeah, it was. Um, I think it's funny that those movies, you know, all the vampires had like that uh, powdered makeup mm -hmm. on. And like the hazel eyes and the ram pants. They couldn't figure out who the vampires were and they all got powdery. I yeah. know, it's the people who look like ghosts. It's them. That's who it is. <laughs> the one that's looking at their lips whenever you sit next to them. Hilarious. I never got into the the Harry Potter, Potter books, mm -hmm. but those movies during the pandemic, I watched every one of them and oh my God, I loved it. Yeah, the movies really brought it to life. I think they did a really good job. Quidditch, what's that game that they play? Quidditch. Yeah. Um, with the little balls and they fly around in the broomsticks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I liked it. Um, I've been to Universal. They have Harry Potter World. I went two years ago for my birthday. It was my first time going. And I enjoyed it so much. I went to Universal two weeks ago. And the Harry Potter ride is amazing because they take you through Hogwarts and then they have the sorting hat. So you stand in front of it. It's like, ah, ha, ha, ha. You look like a brave soul. You might be, uh, let's see, Gryffindor or whatever. So it's fun. And they put you in these seats and saddle you up and they give you a wand and you get to fight off the Death Eaters. And they have the Death Eaters walking around and it really put a lot into that. And I was like, oh, I feel like I'm here and I like it. Great. So which um, which is, which school are you? The um, You know what I'm saying? I feel like uh, I'm not very much a leader. I would say I would be Gryffindor, but I don't like to always display my leadership. So maybe like a Ravenclaw. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to take a passage and see and let people fuck up. Then you 
take over. I like it. Yeah. What about you? Uh, yeah, Gryffindor, definitely. Okay. Yeah, and, I, and then you, 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 I, you, you, you taught me I should reconsider my Team Edward stance. I just think if you look at it from a different perspective, it's like, yeah, I don't know if he was really, her dad was just any father it would be with a 16, 17 year old daughter running around with a dude at night. You don't want her doing that. You definitely don't want her running around with a man who eat people. Yeah. You know, she was acting like her dad was such a terrible person. It's like, no, nah, you, you literally dating a serial killer. He's a serial killer. But I think a lot of movies are like that when you do the research and you look back. Not even do the research when you watch it as an adult. Yeah. Like I guess I was an older that, man dating a younger woman when I watched. <laughs> the, uh, you were a hundred years older than her, though. <laughs> but even The Little Mermaid, they remade that. That was a really good movie. But even the live the, action one that everyone yeah. got upset about. They got upset. That movie because was so it, beautiful. It, it wasn't a white woman doing the mermaid. Being, being the, the mermaid, because mermaids are real. But it was such a beautiful movie. Like, the colors and the... It just looks so pretty. But if you think about it, like she's leaving her whole family to go live with like these white people on an island and her dad was under the sea. He kissed her. Yeah. You know? He like, maybe we fish. They eat fish. They eat fish all the time. <laughs> like, why would you go up there? Bring some tartar sauce. Oh shit. Shit, shit, shit. But no, a lot of these movies are quote unquote like supposed to be good but it's like nah this is if Disney this shit was real it'd be real fucked up I like all that Disney stuff yeah you know I didn't see that live action remake I know some people the Disney purists hate all those yeah live action remakes I, I was at the <clears throat> airport and um, I had my hair kind of like this it was like this maybe long blonde braids and uh, I don't know what city I was in but a white man came up to me he was like oh I love your hair he was like the Little Mermaid. I talked about it on stage. I said, "Oh, he must have said that now because the Little Mermaid is black." Because before, I could have. He would have never been like, "I look like the Little Mermaid." He was like, "Yeah." She like a black girl with blonde braids. <laughs> uh, people only knew that race is propaganda. Yeah, it's different. Have you ever uh, dated someone who was not um, who was non-white and their family did not? want you dating them yeah the last relationship i was in okay the toronto one um she was muslim oh religious though no and uh um her family was arabic Mm. the it wasn't the religious difference why they didn't approve of the relationship it was the age difference okay i could convert to islam i couldn't convert to being 35. there you go so you could identify as a 35. so yeah so so to not be accepted um and it's funny like i really i wanted to be accepted by this family because i was in love with the the daughter and um I just, it was this, uh, this dream I had to be accepted by these people. And like, now I'm out of that situation and I'm in a happier uh, place. Yeah. Like, why did I give a fuck what this family in Canada thought? Right. You know? Yeah. And I would have been the most subservient, never express an opinion. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like just. To, uh, to, fit in. to fit in or want that family to like me and like, oh my God, I, um, I would have been unhappy. You would have been eventually. Yeah. My, my mom always says, you dodged a bullet, honey. Yeah. I, I have some bullets I wish I had dodged. I got shot by some of them motherfuckers. You got literally shot? No, I mean like in terms of dating. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I think that. But yeah, I've got some bullets. What's funny, like as, as intelligent as you know you are, to find yourself in a position where you're like, why did <laughs> you like? Why did I put up with? Who was I? Yeah, that you. It's almost like a, a spell has been cast. I think love is bullshit. It's bullshit. It's a uh, yeah. You are your highest version of you. I think everybody can relate to that. Cause man, yeah, I just yeah, I I shed a lot of tears under some fucking dirt bags. I can't even believe it. Like, it's so embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> They're like, remember when we dated? I'm like, absolutely, I do not remember that. That never happened. 
what's the hardest heartbreak you think you've experienced? Like, you don't have to go into <clears throat> too many details if you want, but like, your re like we were talking before we recorded, I was saying like, I was telling you about mm -hmm. this event that happened with that last relationship. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't know why I took it so hard. Like what, what's the hardest, what's the heaviest ton of bricks that fell on you heart wise? Um, I, 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 I'm going to be real with you. I, I'm very like, if I like you, I like you super a lot. And so I'm, all, or nothing. And all of them hurt. Everyone hurts. All they all hurt. But like, I get up from pretty fast. Like I'm like going to the next, but um, I dated a woman um, a couple of years ago, and that one was hard because I had literally like introduced her to my family. This is the first person I, first woman I introduced to my family. Wow. I really was just taking in the different lifestyle. I was going. I went to Pride in Denver. You know, it was a lot of different things that I had never done. My friends are all like, "What the fuck are you doing?" And so I was just so happy, but I think she was just, you know, not serious, uh, very much a lover girl. She loved everybody. And she's just like, she spread herself too thin. She had too many, too many homes. <laughs> yeah. And like she, and, and as much as women are like, oh, women should be with women because they're not like men. No, some of these women act like men. Yeah. Yeah. So she yeah, wasn't. That's true. So that was different. But it also, I think it was harder too because. I had committed to that decision so hard by introducing her to my family and being like out in the public and taking pictures and having my friends meet her and stuff that when it fell apart, I almost felt like my friends were like, oh, it was a phase. I didn't like that they just thought it was a phase because it was like, no, I really like love this person. And it wasn't just, I wasn't a high schooler just going through a phase, but I will never date another woman. Actually. But what is the difference? What? What did she make you feel that no man had ever made you feel? Um, I, she just adored me. Yeah. Yeah, she adored me. I realize me. that's, you know, like, I'm, I, I, you know, you know my, my situation. Mm -hmm. This new person I'm seeing, like, it's so wonderful to be adored again. Yeah. I mean, I didn't realize how starving for <laughs> a tech, you know, when someone just loves you so much, they just start like touching your head and stuff. Mm -hmm. I feel like a puppy. I'm just like, yeah. my little, I, <laughs> <laughs> but I think maybe as comedians that, you know, we get adoration a lot from strangers. So it's nice to actually have that from a person who actually knows you because we're putting on a show for these people to admire us. So for you to be in your own space, being your true authentic self and somebody to still say, hey, I love this. That's great because we know how to put on a show to make people like us. Yeah. So... I think that that was but with it. all of the suffering we relieve and all the joy we bring we help people forget their problems mm -hmm. shouldn't people adore us when they're in a relationship with us they should they really <laughs> should <laughs> we're more special than the others i'm kidding i i mean shit, i don't know <laughs> i realize that um i just think you know it's uh it, it's double karmic punishment if you break a comedian's heart yeah, because what's wrong with you? Something's wrong with you, clearly. This person is um, a great storyteller and very entertaining. Why would you do that? Yeah. But I think sometimes we have a light. I was talking to somebody last night, and they were telling me that I have a, a, a aura. And I think a lot of comedians have that. That's our superpower. We have an aura. We bring people in. We draw people to us. And one of the things I realized is, just because you have an aura and the light and you can draw people to you doesn't mean it's only the good people. You draw you you draw the bad people and the good people. So it's up to you to decipher who's supposed to who's allowed to be around it and who's not. Cause some of these motherfuckers go, Oh my God. Oh it's so and then they come in with all their problems and they just start fucking throwing water on your light. You know? So yeah. gotta protect it. That's why I get off stage and I don't talk to nobody after the show. <laughs> I'm like, that's enough light for y'all. Good night. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. Do you know, like doing that or do you mind? No, like, um, <clears throat> no, I mean, I like meeting people after shows, but I won't, you know, the, the, in the, in the last year when I was single, like, mm -hmm. um, sometimes I, you know, go out and, 
hope that different motives. It looks like know? that's a that's a male comedian thing. You're like, yeah, how big of a fan are you? <laughs> no, <laughs> not like that. Like in just loneliness and wanting to meet oh, okay. wanting to meet somebody. Yeah. Like Jesus. Like even not even to hook up. Just like have conversation. Okay. Uh, just to you know spend some time with somebody. I mean, I the last couple of years <clears throat> I spent. Uh, a ridiculous amount of time alone. Yeah. 21, 2021 to, to 2023. Holy shit. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, um, I hate selling shit after a show. Oh my God. I think it did, to, to be the headliner and like say good night and then walk from the stage to stand by the door to it's squeeze a couple table. more bucks out of the people mm-hmm. when it's already, you know, they spent money going out. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I've only done it when I had an album to sell. Yeah. You know, and I'd get like a thousand made. Like, um, fortunately, I, I sold all my vinyl <laughs> records. I, oh, nice. I, I, I put my last album out on vinyl because I love vinyl. That's dope. And I uh, had a thousand of them. Mm-hmm. And it took a little while longer to sell it because like some people would be like, are you selling the record players too? Yeah. You know, um, but I, uh, I was glad to sell the last one because I, I do not like standing by the door. Same. I, I went on the road. So it's not like I'm out there looking for women. Yeah. You know, I was, conversation. You know. I, I went on the road with Hannibal, and this was the first time I experienced this. We did a, a theater, theater with him, and um, he goes, the people come up and they're like, "Do you have any merchandise?" I'm like, "Yeah." So they put it all with. His merchandise stuff, and I probably only made like maybe two hundred dollars. It was just so nice that people bought my stuff, and I didn't have to be there because right. <clears throat> the main thing is I'll do these shows, and it'll be like a little line for me. But sometimes the people don't even want to buy stuff. So what I started doing was, um, oh hey, great, it's so nice to meet you. Can you stand to the side while I sell this merchandise first? Then people feel like if they want to talk to me, you need to give me ten dollars because like. Yeah. You're standing up here talking for 10 minutes about your auntie and your dog. Or if somebody does buy something and then they think they bought your time mm-hmm. and start rambling to you. And then there's a line behind them. Someone's going into some long ass stories. I've gotten a professional. I've become a professional with that. I handed them like, oh my God, what's your name? Thank you. Compliment them on something. This is so nice to meet you. Thank you for supporting my comedy. Would you like to take a picture? <clears throat> After we take a picture, it's over. You, once you get a picture, that's a period at the end of the sentence. You got to keep it moving. <laughs> what else do you want? Well, that's why I like not selling things to just actually go out to have conversations with people. Like at one of those, um, was it Saturday or Sunday? Uh-huh. Remember there was a German woman in the audience? Uh-huh. I think that might've been Sunday. Okay. Um, she was with a American dude who lives in Vegas. He works for one of the Cirque du Soleil shows. Okay. And uh, he told me, he goes, man, I, I, uh, I, I used to, I, I listened to your podcast a lot mm-hmm. I, when I was going through my divorce Ooh. and I was trying to stay friends with my ex. Ooh. And that was my experience. My, you talked about it. On your yeah. And, and my um, ex-wife, Ashna, is still my best friend. And mm-hmm. she's still, I, we do the podcast together oh, nice. regularly. I, she, she's, she's my family forever yeah. and super intelligent. Mm-hmm. And has a world view being um, European. And her- How is it dating women with your ex-wife being your best friend? She's been g- good. How, the, she was how worried- do the women handle it? Uh, <laughs> the last relationship I was in, it was kind of, she was younger, so it was hard for her to accept yeah. the first year we were together. Okay. So she... You know, she came around on it, but it was, you know, I had to learn to not mention her name often. Right. The first year we were together, like if I tell a story about when I had gone to Rome, I would leave out the fact that I had gone to Rome with Ashna, you know, yeah. little things like that. Um, you know, she came around on it later, yeah. but it was it was hard because most people aren't still friends with the ex. No, not unless they share children, and even then, they still probably hate them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a friend oh. that I dated um, that's a comedian, and he told, he's married, he invited me to his wedding, but he told his wife before, because they had been dating for years, and um, yeah, I think that um, 
Yeah. We only dated three months. I didn't think he needed to tell us, but he did. But I definitely think um, it kind of created a little drift in our friendship because we I do share a lot of mutual friends and close friends. I, he invited me to the wedding, but I didn't feel like I should actually go because I, I don't think she cares for me. Right. But, you know, it is what it is. I was definitely like, why would you tell her that? And <laughs> he's like, she don't like it. You're around. Me. So there we go. There we go. Have any of your exes gone on to be more successful than you? Um, no, I've not. Dated. See, I think that would be that would be real painful. I haven't dated <laughs> many industry people, and so you know, my exes are like accountants and tech guys. Right. You know, um, maybe they make more money now, or they might, but I know, like as far as people. And a know couple of these them, guys broke your heart. Um, yeah, it's fucking nerds. Just yeah, nerds. What, what's what's a, what's a nerd heartbreak like? You know what the thing is? Sometimes I think um, I reduce myself so much. Like, you don't have to be this. You don't have to be that. I love you for who you are. And I think sometimes, especially being a male, having a woman around that just, you know, she's like, I come into a room, I could write in a room. I have a fun personality. A lot of people want to talk to me. Some guys can't handle the pressure. Or I would say specifically with my last boyfriend, um, I don't. I think that he had self esteem issues, and so he didn't necessarily like break my heart, but he more so like ran away from the relationship. Like I can't give you what you need. Mm. I think he knew he saw like a, a a rising star in front of him, and I don't think he thought that he could live up. And I'm happy that he did leave. Yeah. Because it's just gonna get bigger. And I don't want you mad at me because he had a dream that he wanted to follow, but he was scared to follow it. And it's really hard to date somebody when you're pursuing your dream without fear. To they they become like almost like you know disappointed in themselves. They're not shit to do with me. I was over here living. So yeah, he was. That's interesting. I remember many years ago, I um, and I was. Um, it was actually the the woman from Kenya that I dated. Mm-hmm. She was a doctor. Okay. She was doing research medicine. That's she true. wanted to cure AIDS for Africa. Right. Super noble woman. And she was super Christian. Okay. Amazing woman. Mm-hmm. So pure. So such a uh, good human mm-hmm. doing great things for humanity. Right. And I was still a knucklehead then. I was still drinking uh, heavily and... Um, doing recreational drugs whenever I felt like it. Right. And I actually felt like I wasn't good enough for this woman. See? And I disappeared from her life. There you go. So that's the that's the side that I that I was getting. Now I think, oh I (laughs) (laughs) I can do it. But I think too I feel like male comedians don't deal with this because as a man men are are always even in relationships that aren't entertainment, men are the funny ones. Men are the ones, they are the voice, they are the personality, they are all of those things. And so sometimes if I'm dating a guy, like I was reading something, I, well, some guy was telling me, he's like, I don't know if I want to date a funny girl where like my friends enjoy her company and like are laughing at her all the time. Like, yeah. you know, you go out and your homeboy, you're like, oh, is Brady coming? Like, you know what I'm saying? And not even like romantically, but we just like, like your girlfriend. Right. <laughs> So I could. So some guys can't handle the um, I feel like not being my- superior in the the funny department, intelligent department, you know, all the attention department, everything. I think um, in some ways, like being like uh, being able to like hold court and being like a personality and funny person is kind of like a masculine trait. You know, some people can't handle, like, especially when a bunch of comedians are together. Mm -hmm. Like, we've all got this dominant personality. Like, we're all great storytellers. Mm -hmm. We're always like, oh, this person said that. There's a naturally funny line coming Mm -hmm. off the top of my head. Like, normal citizen people can't handle that, just that um, uh, powerful energy, I think. Yeah, I've had guys who just like, you know. I just feel like sometimes when I bring you off, you're like showing off. And I'm like, I'm not showing off. I'm just being myself. Like, right. what the fuck? Yeah. And so I feel like, especially nowadays, some guys just prefer a woman who's just sits there and is pretty and just agrees with everything they say and laugh and, you know, the jokes. I hate dating a guy who can't 
Oh, you were telling me, wasn't you were telling me like men trying to control women now? This yeah. this kind of Andrew Tate. Some of uh, them, you can run across them. They're all over. It's like a internet daily war. So I think some of those people are bots too, just creating chaos. Yeah. Um, but no, I think um, <clears throat> yeah, because there's, I mean, do you think about it? Fifty, sixty years ago, the dating economy was completely different. Men did make the decisions. Men were the breadwinners. Women didn't have. Women couldn't even get credit cards in their own names until I think. The seventies. I, I think nineteen seventy, around the early seventies. And so they could have their own bank accounts at one point. And so it's like the men is some of these men want to be traditional, but it's like we don't have traditional lives anymore. You're she's not gonna make the dinner, cook the food, make the breakfast, feed the kids. She works at forty hours too. You know, so they they want traditional women, but they're not providing traditional lifestyles. Right. Because if I got to go get up and go to work, we taking turns making dinner. The fuck? Yeah. Or we going to not eat. <laughs> I'm not cooking dinner every night. I remember I was telling you about <clears throat> this woman I just started seeing. Excuse me. And I was telling you how she's like three inches taller than me. Yeah. And you I go, you, go to, you said, does that bother you as a man? I was like, no, I think it's yeah. fucking awesome. I think that's amazing. And I told you she's got more money than I do. And you go, does that bother you as a man? I was like, fuck no, it's great. <laughs> like, oh so God. as a man, how do you feel? <laughs> no, but I like, I like, <clears throat> it's interesting. Like, I think some men would um, be intimidated by that or like mm-hmm. feel like lesser value or something. Like, right. I, I'm so glad that I'm not like a regular dude. And yeah. I'm not hung up on. A lot of goofy ass shit. Yeah. I don't want um I don't want to be the boss of anybody. Right. You know? I think I want um, you to flourish. Well I, so a couple of months ago I had um interacted with a man on Instagram. <clears throat> I had given him my phone number. We started texting. He was an aerospace engineer in Atlanta. He was texting start. And stuff. And I had went this was right around the time right after my birthday, I went to New York to go film Fallon. <clears throat> so he had Call me on my birthday and things like that. Then he reached out when I was in New York. I was like, hey, I'm busy. Like, you know, I was just running around for three days straight. And when I get back, he calls and he's just like, how, this is what he said. Did you see your phone? I don't even know. This is, this is what, this is what I said. <laughs> this is what, this is when I knew I didn't like him. He goes, aside from doing the show, how was New York? He didn't say congratulations on doing Fallon. I watched Fallon. You were great. He's just like, push that completely out the way. Aside from doing that. Not how, mention a massive career. Nothing. Uh, Because obviously he dates women who are on Jimmy Fallon all the time. So as as an aerospace fucking engineer, he always dates women like that. Yeah, right. But when he said that, it just seemed dismissive of something that was important to me. And I was just like, oh yeah, he's not the type of man I want to, I want to date somebody who celebrates me. I celebrate me. My friends celebrate me. I celebrate my friends. If you just finished a, a course that you wanted to do, girl, let's go to dinner. Let's, Pop a bottle of champagne. Yeah. I'm always celebrating people. So to date a man who feels like they need to dim your light, yeah, or like dumb it down because they want to make you feel like 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 oh this is normal. Like baby, it's not fucking normal. It's never gonna be normal. Yeah, <laughs> it's not normal over here. So I'm yeah I'm very cognizant of that. Like, how are you? Yeah, no fuck that. That's um, that's a deal breaker. Yeah, and I didn't even tell him why. I just. I was just like, hey, I don't think we're... What, yeah. What's the thing I read online? I read, um, hey, um, it was really nice getting to... I mean, you might be seeing the high breakup with people. Right. It was like, hey, it was really nice getting to know you. Unfortunately, I don't feel like the connection is mutual, but it was really nice getting to know you, and I wish you the best of luck. That's kind. Yeah. But I like the thing you said, and there's, uh, I've seen it uh, pop up online. Uh, I'm sure you have, too, is um, spend your time with people who celebrate you, not people who tolerate you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's real. You always get further in those scenarios. I went on, um, I'll tell you, I haven't, I don't think I've, it, 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 it took me a while to process this. And I don't think I've told this story on the on the podcast yet, mm-hmm. but you're talking about deal breaker date situations. And, right. Um, I went on this date with this woman Pretty well. I mean, she had a, she had a good job, good um, just whatever, and she seemed intelligent, and she was liberal. 
um, hated Trump. Okay, well, we're okay. We're you know we're we're, we're cooking. We're we're, cooking. Get, we're in the comfort zone here. <laughs> Everything's good so far. Um, and you know, on the, <clears throat> especially this year, I've overbooked this year. Okay. So like, I'm so happy to be home right now. Yeah. And my t- time at home is so rare. And then when I'm home, I'm also out doing sets. Mm-hmm. So like, to take time to d- invest in someone and date someone. So I took this woman on three dates. Okay. She told me she hated cigarettes. Okay. And she'd never kiss a man that smelled like cigarettes. So I didn't smoke. There you go. And then, you know, didn't didn't smoke after I took the shower to get ready, brush my teeth, you know, uh, twice, mouthwash, just fresh. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, there was... Uh, there was there was a little mild chumpy thing that happened on the second date where I took her to um, uh, Yamashiro's. I was doing a set. It's so nice up there. It's beautiful. And what a what a great place to take a date. Yeah. It so is. I took her to dinner before the show, nice. and then I do. I'm on like third, mm-hmm. and I sat with her the first two comedians, and then I had to get up and pace around. Then I did my set, came back over, and I, I told her I, I, I I'm gonna uh, I'll get us you know, get you a drink and ran into a friend. I wasn't gone long. Mm-hmm. And then I came back and sat by her. And then afterwards she told me, uh, yeah, I was a little irritated. You didn't sit with me the whole show. Mm-hmm. And me being Mr. Kindness, I go, oh, I'm sorry. I should have explained that to you before. If I'm on a show, I'll never sit there and watch the whole show. Yeah. I'm thinking I got to get, I got to, I'm, I'm preparing my thoughts. And this then, all, and then also, I got to pace around. I got to yeah. like, I got to like get this little, uh, hurricane, uh, swirling. Yeah. So that was like red flag number one. And yeah. then on the third date, the final date, she starts casually using the N word. What? Yeah. And I, what? Yeah. like with so, the hard ER? Hard ER. Oh my God. So she God. pops it off like two or three times. And I said, um, was she white? Mexican American. Oh God. So I said, would you mind not using that word? It really bothers me. And she goes, well, you don't understand. It's a Spanish culture thing. So she's explaining to me that her brother is darker skinned than the rest of them. Okay. So everyone calls him El Negro. Yeah. But her nickname for him is the N-word. Okay. And then she pops it off. But when I say N-word, she and she pops it off like three more times after I told her it bothers me. Yeah. So... The thing I hate the most in the world is when somebody treats me like I'm uh, some dumb fucking white guy. Like I don't know anything. Mm-hmm. And I said, listen, um, I mentioned before my mother's from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Mm-hmm. Last year, I spent a month in Argentina with my cousins. Mm-hmm. I have a cousin who's darker skinned than the rest of them. And their nickname for him is El Negro, mm-hmm. which is Spanish for the black one. Mm-hmm. That is a Spanish culture thing. Yeah, to call someone El Negro, mm-hmm. but to to use the N word is not a Spanish it's culture. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I never I ghosted this woman so hard afterwards, and she texted me some really long apologies. I'm not that kind of person. That and is insane. You don't fully understand, and like. <laughs> and it's like she was really wild. Yeah. She should at least like you know save it for like eight eight months. <laughs> well, I made, a, make and I, fall a, I made a joke to try and light, light, lighten the mood. I go, well, listen, because uh, then when she used it again after it, and I really shut her down with my Argentina insight. Mm-hmm. But I said, um, you know, uh, if, if, if you're going to use that word, then uh, every time you use it, I'm going to have a cigarette. Oh, but it was a joke and she didn't laugh at it. You know, yeah. so, but she I, she also didn't have a good sense of humor. So, well, she was, and she kept telling me, I don't play games. I don't play games like, like this pride of not, uh, yeah, that uh, she wasn't for me. And, yeah. And She's so, like, I don't play games. I play racist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was, uh, that's crazy. That was a real disaster. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. And now my current situation, I think, really punctuates how I feel about that. Yeah. <laughs> that's wild. Oh man, I um, yeah, that's interesting. Some clubs, you say, you, you, yeah, you can shut, you can shut that down. I uh, went out with the um one tender date with the Mexican guy, and you know, 
in the in the Mexican hood, they say nigga, and they say, and I said, hey, hey baby, <laughs> well, we not there. You can't say that around me. But it was one, a one and done day. It was so fucking ghetto. Sometimes I just stay for the story. You know what I'm saying? Because I knew Come I on, for the material. Yeah, I knew I should. <laughs> I, I, I knew I, I really knew I shouldn't have been there. Like when you say ghetto, what you went say you had uh, you shared a cheese. Cheeseburger in it front was of McDonald's. He asked me if I wanted a drink uh-huh. at the movies. We went to go see um, The Purge. He asked me if I wanted a drink. I said, yeah. He said, great. Let's go to your car. So we went to my car for it. He said, it's a Whole Foods across the street. He wanted to go buy a pack of Modelo to, to let me, bring it to the theater. To bring it to the theater. And we did. And we did. When was this? This had to be like, oh my god, 2014. I had oh, just broken okay. up with my uh, long term boyfriend, and I just got on Tinder. I dated some everybody. I went out with a Mexican. I went out with a uh, um, an Indian guy. I went out with a guy from Pakistan. He told me he had that he basically had to marry his cousin. And then the the <laughs> the other Indian guy, he kept. It's so crazy how I feel like sometimes you get on these dating sites, and I'm open racially to date. My preference is black men. I will say that. But I like that you sampled the flavors. Yeah, you, you I mean, weren't... I've had I've had white boyfriends that I've dated for a longer amount of time. My parents have met them and things. But I know as I've gotten older, it's just certain things that I feel like a black man just gets. And so, unless I just meet somebody who just really, really gets it. But I don't want to teach you shit. I don't never want to be your first black girlfriend. Right. Sometimes it's just you, you, you just out here trying shit. But I went out <laughs> with the um. The Indian guy, and in the first day, and it was probably my fault because I was on Tinder and that's a hookup app. But yeah, that's I, what I wanted to I didn't know. I didn't know. Oh, so you thought this was for dating? Yeah, so we we're on there. And he just was like telling me that, like, he's dated black girls. Talk about guys look at licking their lips. He said he's dated women before, black women before, and they all say he had a, a big, a big dick. Okay, that's that that's interesting to drop that information up. But I up guess because he, he's like, well, you know, I'm Indian, but other black women say I have a big dick, and I'm sitting there like. Uh, so for the appetizer, yeah, I like the calamari. Like, what the fuck is happening? Right. And I also, yeah, I didn't know Tinder was a hookup app. Um, Did you ever hook up with anybody? No. Okay. Fuck no. I was up there, like, literally live tweeting my dates. I was just, I was just live. Hilarious. I'll stay for the meal. I was like, yeah. In my twenties, I'm like, yeah, I'm stay for the meal. Like, this motherfucker just told me he had a big dick, y'all. We about to eat a cheeseburger right now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just what the fuck? No. And just. Uh, super aggressive. When did you figure out that was the hookup um, site? Like after, like after three or probably four dates like in? the third one, and they were all just like, <laughs> well, well, no, I would only go. On, I only went on one date with all of these guys. Yeah, but when they were like aggressively, like you know, kissing at the end of a first date may or may not happen. But if you don't even ask, or it's not like this moment. Yeah. And you just like, oh, the date's over. I deserve a kiss. And just like a great, just like, okay, well, it's nice to see you. They're like, like, I'm like, what the, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm very much the type of woman right. that's like, can you please stop? Like, <laughs> I'll shut that shit down. Get out of my face. What are you doing? So, yeah, I was like, oh, okay. I see what's happening. But yeah, I was, I was going out with all the different flavors. I was. As a woman, did you ever feel in danger? Because no. I would, even as, a, even as a man, I would be like, I mean, we're in Chicago. who is this person? We're in downtown Chicago. It's, it's a Friday night. It's You're very in public. popular. Yeah. I'm not going to nobody's house. No, right. I think people I know who want to attack me. I'm, I'm so, such a scary person. Especially being a female comedian on the road. I'm always terrified. That's yeah. why I don't go. That's why I'm saying as a man, it's probably different for you after shows to go talk to people. Sometimes I'm like, you know, some of these people send me weird. Like, I had man in my DMs who be talking to himself for two years. You think I want to go fucking meet him in fucking Buffalo, New York? No, right. I don't. He ain't going to follow me. Yeah. But like the Tinder, like it's just people randomly hooking up from. I was on Tinder for two weeks. I'm, never so I'm surprised we don't hear about more incidents. They do. They have happen. a whole documentary on uh, Netflix, a Tinder swindler. Mm. Tricking women, getting them to send them money. But also, people have been, they had a Tinder serial killer. They had those things. Okay. I don't do the dating apps anymore. If I can't meet you in real life, then we're not probably never going to talk. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been, I've been off for about, uh, the last time I was on, I've been off regularly for about two years. The last time I was on, I was in Austin, Texas, Moon mm-hmm. Tower. And I got on, and I was just like, I'm going to be here for five days. 
let's see who's in Austin. I like Austin. Maybe I'll come back to Austin. Right. So I'm in there matching with people. I matched with this guy. I think he's in the political spectrum. He might have been Hispanic. And um, I was like, oh, okay, he's attractive. And then he got his DMs and he's like, oh my God, I knew it was you. I love your social work joke. I just went to your Instagram to see if this was really you. Then message me on Instagram. And I wow. was just like, delete. I deleted the app. I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to deal with this anymore. Yeah. I try, I, and only out of desperation last year, I, I went on uh, Hinge. Mm. And I never went on a date with him. My, it hurt my feelings so quick. Yeah. Um. I talked about it on stage because I didn't realize I was old until I got on Hinge. What happened? It kept matching me with all these grandma aged women. And uh, what age did you put on there? I didn't put any. I didn't know you can set an age. Yeah, you should definitely set an age. Yeah. So yeah, there's some comedian I've worked at the ice at with the at the ice house with a few times, and this guy's showing up with with um, he's he, he's got to be forty five, fifty. Mm -hmm. Keep showing up at the ice house with. Young hot girls in their twenties, yeah. and I'm like, "Where did you meet her?" And he's Hinge. I'm like, "You're kidding me!" And he goes, "Yeah, you can set the age." Like, ah, oh, well. <laughs> well, that that's the thing too, because women can set the age as well. So if women don't have that, like my age preference was probably like five years younger and maybe five years older. So if anybody was over five years older, they wouldn't they wouldn't see me. I wouldn't see them. So, but you can set the age preference. Okay. Well. Yeah. I got off it. I'm, yeah. glad, I'm glad. I, I, want, I want to meet trash. someone in real life, and I did. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, only out of desperation did I give it a try. So, but you know, I was I was in a relationship. My two longest relationships, I met them on dating apps. Okay. In 2011, I met my boyfriend. We dated for almost three years. We met on eHarmony. Um, uh, and then um, in 20. 18, I met my boyfriend uh, that lives out here two and a half years. He's doing well to do, Netflix producer, all these things. Both of them were black men. I met him on Bumble and we dated up until 2021. And so my two longest relationships were dating apps. Okay. So we'll, we'll see. <laughs> I'm off now. I might never get another one. <laughs> Who knows? Um, the, I, I, and I stopped doing the joke because so many comedians talk about dating apps it's like mm -hmm. you know kind of the like in the 80s all these comedians did jokes about flying on airplanes it was kind of like hack they still do i think it's really <laughs> hack now all these comedians with uh dating app jokes and shit mm -hmm. but you could choose five photos in one video yeah and i was obsessed with hot yoga for the last two years mm -hmm. and i got down to 175 mm -hmm. and i like to go roller skating at the beach with no shirt on to get the sun yeah. So a friend of mine was visiting Los Angeles last summer. He rented a bike. I'm on the skates. Mm -hmm. He shoots this video. He's filming it on the bike and I'm behind him. I'm shirtless. Mm -hmm. I got stomach muscles. <laughs> I look, you didn't say abs. You said I got stomach muscles. I look fucking beautiful. <laughs> okay. I'm in the California sun. Right. It's a 19 second video. My friend, at the last three seconds of the video, he holds the, the phone up to his face and smiles. Mm -hmm. I didn't think to edit that part off. I just put this nine tech, 19 second video on because uh -huh. I thought, oh man, I look fucking beautiful. Mm -hmm. Some woman commented, can you introduce me to your friend who appears at the end of the video? Oh my God. And I said, fuck this dating app. Yeah. I deleted it. Yeah. Like, I didn't get on here to get my feelings hurt. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, I... That's terrible. I but I have seen that. Like me and like, cause some of my girlfriends are on the dating app still. Yeah. I won't get on it. Just like, um, it's, I don't want to do it. But um, I'll go look at my girlfriend's thing. And she's like, I hate when they post group pictures. And it's like, not the guy that you like, like, where's he, you know? Yeah. But I also, um, I, I have been doing this thing where I was telling my friend, she should let me like run her dating thing for her and match. Cause I think sometimes, when you're in your own head, you're like, oh, well, I don't want, you have such a long list of things that you don't want that you you almost count out people who could be a good match. I was trying to tell Kisa, I was like, you should just set it up and like, let me run it and I'll introduce you with people. I know you really well. I'll introduce you to people that I think you might actually be compatible with, you know? Right. And so we're, we're going to see, we're going to see, but I think that's different. Let your friends match you up. I actually DM'd a guy last week. He was on there. 
It's like some hot Hispanic guy. It's like, oh, you know, I need to go outside. I'm looking for my wife. I DM'd him. You know, I got a check mark. I got a nice amount of followers. I was like, hey, I saw your post. And I sent him Keith's profile. I said, I have a friend. I think y'all should meet. Like, he hasn't messaged me back yet, though. But, but he said he was looking for his wife? He said he was looking for his wife. Oh, on the, on the, oh, he's looking, oh. Uh, he's on social media Got it, thing. got it, got and it, the, got and it. And it went viral, so I, like, messaged him. I was like, hey, I know you don't know me, but I saw your post saying you're looking for your wife. I have a friend who's single. I think that you guys will be a good pair. And, and he hasn't messaged me back. I'm waiting. Okay. That'd be fun, though. And Keese is hot. She's a catch. She is. Yeah. So and nice. she does good nails. Yeah, and I'm like, why don't you respond? Give me a respond. People, other people be on the end of their line. He probably already got a wife. Yeah, that's exactly. And he's trying to get exactly. some, some likes. So uh, we were talking about dreams. You said you have like really vivid dreams that mm-hmm. you like. You want to go back to sleep and see how the movie ends. I yeah, thought, I thought that was funny. I think I like Michael Moore. Like good, good, good ones. Very good imagination. Um, I try to decipher them sometimes, but I don't believe it. Cause they're like. Oh, if you dream about a boat in a tub, you're going to get $10 million. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at all my overdraft fees. Okay. <laughs> so I think more so dreams are what you feel about situations. Not So if I have a dream about you and you come into my dream and you cuss me out, you say all oh, this mean shit to me. It's not really like, ooh, you know, I knew fucking Tom. I knew, I knew that motherfucker was a motherfucker. Like, it's not like that. It's you more know so, that dream was bullshit. Yeah, but I, I know that, but it's more what I'm saying to me. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. It was you talking to you. That's what I think. Some signal. Yeah, I think it's, it's your subconscious talking to you. I think your subconscious is trying to tell you something in mm-hmm. dreams, certainly. You think they ever tell you future things? Mm, I don't know. Do you believe in that stuff? Uh, you know, I always think I believe in signs and I, I look for like signs, but these signs have led me astray and in the wrong. <laughs> I've been burnt by uh, <laughs> something I thought was a good omen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think, uh, I don't read too much into them, but if I'm having like a happy moment, I look at the clock and it's 3.33. Yeah, th- like, things like that. Are, yeah, I like I'm like, that. okay, thank you. I will say this. I do think that the number seven has some significance in my life. I was in Chicago for seven years. I moved to LA September 7th. Um, this year, September 7th, was my seventh year in LA. And it's just like I, every year on my birthday in, in September, something just, it's like my new year, something dope happens for me. Like I did Fallon three days after my, I did, my, I did Fallon on September, it, it was, just September, but I also think the number seven is good. It's the God number. I I, I like seven too. Mm-hmm. I was born on the fourteenth, so I'm all of what January. You're an Aquarius. Capricorn. Oh, I like Capricorns a lot. That's why we get along. That's right. It's an Earth sign. What are you? September thirteenth, the Virgo. Okay. Very logical, reasonable people. We're the best. Everybody else is wrong. Capricorns are great leaders, great writers. Um, but very moody bitches. Who are some famous Capricorns? Martin Luther King Jr. Wow. Elvis. Wow. Jesus. Muhammad Ali. Okay. Um, the best of the best. Yeah. I got Beyonce. I got Michael Jackson. I can't think of nobody else. That's, those are pretty good, though. <laughs> <laughs> those are pretty good. So how long have you been on stand-up? Like, you told me before I forgot. On what? How long have you been doing stand-up? Um, I took a, a year off to do acting in 2021, and I didn't do it in 2022. So if we subtract those two years, it's been 12. But really, before I started it in 2010. But then I didn't do it for two years. Well, I think you're a superstar waiting to happen. Thank you. So what do you envision for yourself? What? Um, you want to be just a stand up? You want to no, you have a no. television show? You want to be in movies? Um, be a, a host? No, I don't. I, I, you know what? People are always like, "How do you look so young?" I'm like, "Cause I only do things I want to do. If they feel like I'm not want to do it and I get stressed out, I'm not doing it. 
And so I just want to do things that make me happy. I want to, you know, I really love what Issa Rae's doing where she's creating like content and create, like she has this umbrella of things underneath her that just speak to the people who support her. Like, oh, you, you like me? You like my brand of comedy? Like trust the other things that I put out. And I just want to kind of create, I want to be a producer. I want to have it, I want to be like, you know, have a show that I created, shows that I've created, maybe even some, I want to work with my friends and have fun. Yeah. I want to be like Seth Rogen. I want to be like Adam Sandler. I want to do stand up when I want to do it. And then I want to go do a funny movie and be like, hey, Tom, we about to go do a movie about people playing fucking kickball. I'm in. Yeah. And then like, and then I want to go not do it. When yeah. I don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah. I might write a book. I was thinking about writing a fucking book about all the fucking losers I dated. Would that be the theme of it? Predominantly failed relationships? Um, I was thinking about... Um, it was Did you remember that first Ali Wong? I love Ali Wong. She, I think she's one of the all-time greats. That was I funny. haven't seen her new special. But the way she structures her hour specials, like you see a lot of English comedians... Um, and European comedians do this where they'll like structure like a, an hour show mm -hmm. where there's like a, you know, arc in the middle and a surprise ending. But on that first special, she was talking about when she was younger, she dated this guy who was homeless mm. and she did, she fucked him in the car. And then she, I forget how she described it, but just, you know, that feeling when you drop the dude off mm -hmm. so he can go sleep in the park. Mm. You know, and she's living with her parents. Yeah. Um, I remember her first special. I don't remember that, but I re somebody broke that special down. Like, set up punchline laughs per minute. Yeah. And why that was the perfect special ever. Yeah. And it was really Baby Cobra. I think so. I, I ranked that. I think that's probably the greatest special of all time. I think it's really good. I, I will say this, though, and I was kind of disappointed. I did show her on West Side. I was kind of disappointed by her response. Um, she got up there after me. And um, she did, uh, she was just kind of fucking around. So at the end, she asked the audience, she goes, you know, do you have any questions? And so it's one fucking dick in the audience. He's like, yeah, so why are you so funny and other women aren't funny? Oh, no. And she like doubled down on it. She was like, other women just don't write. Oh, so, no. And I was, oh, you're kidding. And I was, and I was literally, <clears throat> I was standing out to the side in a couple, and not even trying to. And she went on me. after you. Ouch. She went on after me. Ouch. But I had, I had fucking killed. I don't think she saw my son. Right. And so I was standing out to the side, and there was clearly in the audience that kind of just looked at me. They were like, you were great. Wow. Because it was like, what What are you saying right now? You know, but I think he was trying to fucking dick ride, and I think that- Dick was, ride? Yeah, he was dick riding her. He was trying to dick ride her. But <laughs> I, I think she didn't. It was just, to me, it just seemed so, uh, un like, what are, you, what are you doing right now? Why would you say that? But That's not even specifically about me, but because it was other women on the show. And also, I didn't feel no type I of way. I hate that stereotype. Women, I and am, especially now, there's so many funny women. That's what I was like. Oh I didn't, I didn't take offense to it because I know that yeah. I was funny. But also, why would you Why would you uh, feed into that stereotype as yeah. a woman? Because even when people come up to me and they're like, oh my God, I love you. Yeah. Other women don't make me laugh. I said, well, that's unfortunate. I could tell you some other funny women. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to be like, yeah, you know what? You're right. I'm the only funny bitch. Because that's weird. Yeah. It's fucking weird. No. Uh, Maria Bamford, yeah. um, Gina Yashire, uh, Erica Rhodes. Who's the... Um, don't Say So Long. Don't Say So Hilarious. Mm -hmm. the, um, Eleanor. Eleanor Kerrigan is hilarious. Um, Maddie Mays. I'm, I don't uh, know uh, the... The woman who uh, broke out on that Tom Brady roast. Oh, uh, Glazer, Nikki Glazer. Nikki Glazer, her. And then also, who's the, the other woman? Liza. Liza. God, I couldn't think of her name. Thank you. She, her work ethic. I see her at the comedy store. Like, yeah. she'll be working on shit. She's amazing. Like, she has, like, you know, her, her like, a, a she'll, she'll print out, like, a computer thing of, like, you know, her, uh, mm -hmm. just one page. Mm -hmm of like the topic she wants to talk. And I'll see her backstage or on this, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in the hallway, like looking at her notes before she goes on. She works so hard in writing these jokes and performing them and crafting them. And Ali Wong does that as well. Yeah. I'll see her out mm -hmm. working on her stuff. 
And uh-huh. her out, both of them, their output on putting out hour, solid hour mm-hmm. specials every year or two is unbelievable. She, I, I saw, I did a show in the Key Glazer. I've done a couple shows with her, like just showcase shows around LA. And the first time she saw me, she like pulled me aside. She's like, oh my God, you're so fucking funny. And she's like, in this bit, and this bit. And then I ran into her at the comedy store and I was, I did a bit about like dating like the older gentleman and like the, 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 the nuisance, the, the nuisance, is that what I, Wherever you say it, the word. Nuisance. Nuances. Nuances. Okay. The nuances that we went through. And she comes up to me and she goes, listen, ever since I saw that show, she said, I, she said, I'm not stealing your material. She said, but I keep telling my friends about it. And she's like, and I'll probably fucking even choke up. But she was just like, it's just so fucking good. And I'm just like, take me on the road. Like, yeah. <laughs> but no, she was really nice. She gave me a couple tags. And she's just, anytime I see her, she comes into the room and she watches me. You're, I watched you said as many. This, we did 14 shows together <laughs> at the Comedy Cellar in Vegas, and uh, I, I must. I think I watched 10 of your shows. Yeah, you know, um, you. you're, and I, I. It's why you're on the show, and it's why we're friends. I, yeah. uh, you're a master. Thank you. And you're so real on stage. You, that was the first thing you said to me. Yeah. You said, I like you. You're funny. You said, but you're so real. You're so well, real. Well, what do you mean by real? But the way you talk, and how we were talking before about you were telling me, how, you know, you liked Mitch Hedberg and mm-hmm. uh, when you were younger and uh, Dimitri Martin. Mm-hmm. And I go, oh, wow, that's interesting. You like one-liner guys. Mm-hmm. Because you seem to, and and, and it, it, it was cool that I got to watch you mm-hmm all these sets mm-hmm. because you know you, you are repeating some stuff but it just you seem so natural when you're talking uh, so you know how are you so fucking real up there uh, and i think like my thing especially after i've told a joke a thousand times on the road mm-hmm. i find this kind of rhythm in it <clears throat> and i like getting musical when i'm on stage sometimes yeah. like um when i'm in the pocket and the jokes are hitting yeah. and i can find this this kind of musical rhythm in my uh-huh. delivery but i think and it's something I'm, i've always tried to be conscious of to not be a robot yeah and sometimes i feel like you know especially you're doing 14 shows in a week and you know you're Late show, mm-hmm. Friday or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, you, did I? I, I, I don't want to be just so fucking one liner. I w- I'm trying to talk, uh, uh, and that was great about that Vegas week. I, you know, I didn't have the pressure of being the headliner, so yeah. I, I was trying some different stuff and then mm-hmm. talking, uh, you know, off the top of my head as much as I could. I like that. I, I like I like that you did that. I think for me, um, my mother is a very animated storyteller, and I would see her tell the story, and when she tells it once, other people are like telling the story, and I see her tell the story again, and then she adds some more shit to it, and then I see they're like telling the story, Grace, telling the story. So my mother's always been that person, and so I think I just picked that up from her, and for me. Um, it's always my, I, when I first started, the one thing I used to do to really challenge myself was, because I when I first started, I was a joke writer, joke writer, joke writer, and I would go into AutoZone, not AutoZone, I would go into Autopilot, and I would bomb. Yeah. Because in my head, I'm, I'm in my head thinking, like, this is a joke, this is when they laugh. And then I stopped doing that. Once I started getting into improv classes, I started challenging myself. I would walk out on stage. The first thing I would say, I would not make it a joke. I would walk out, and I would just say what I was feeling or say what I was thinking. And just like start there, like, hey, today was fucking hard, you know. I I was constipated. Now we're gonna get into some jokes or whatever the fuck, you know. Is is like just kind of challenging myself to do that. But I did see you this weekend. You did some things I hadn't seen before. You threw a man, and I was thinking it was your first time doing it when you said, "Oh, my fucking heartbreak," and they were like, "Tell us, tell us." And well, I, I thought, that Barcelona story, yeah, because you know, it was, it was, it was just, a room full of Canadians. It was so <laughs> sweet, the ending, when you're like, well, I'm going to take her to Barcelona. I was like, damn, this was fucking just... But to me, I thought she was just telling the story. And I like to think of, like, I can tell the story in joke format. Like, I know how to, like, embellish a part to add the punchline or add the tag at the callback at the end. Yeah. Like, I do a lot. I write on stage. And that's... um 
I used to be embarrassed about it. You like, like you always. Some know. comedians are like that. They can bring an idea up there and like mold it like clay on but the wheel. I these notebooks. I, 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 I have notebooks. None of them are filled. None of them make sense. It's you don't like, make notes like of uh, this, just even to like to remind yourself of a story. Um. Yeah, I'll have it in my phone. Just like, okay. like I have a note section in my phone, but. Even if I want to tell a story, I never get up there with put like tags in it already. It's just got, and that's why I, sometimes it takes me longer. You know, it might take me like a year to like really get the joke to where, but like this, the jokes that you saw about the gun control and the that was great that you USA. came up with this great. Now it's a it's oh, a that, it's now a, that joke I think is finished. Yeah, no, but it's I've a, been doing and it that's for a six like months. that's a joke so strong, especially with that new ending that you came up with. Mm -hmm. Like that's a closer. That's yeah, a, that's a good night, everybody. Yeah, you know, just when I get them chanting, I'm like, <laughs> fuck yeah. So yeah, it was cool. That was interesting too. I remember after I did that, this old white guy came up to me. Um, I would say he was probably even he's like sixty five. He was like like older older. He had on a hat. He's reminded me of like I know he was going for Trump. He came up to me. He had on some overalls and a fucking flannel shirt with a hat on, like seventy. He's like, I really enjoyed you. I really enjoyed you. I was like, Yeah, I'm I'm crossing over these fucking walls. <laughs> well, I love the, the 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 thing I love about your comedy and watching you. Uh, you're so real, but also you make a lot of points. Yeah, you make good points. It's not just mindless silly shit. Yeah, I like that. Um, the best compliment you were talking to Jose about me, and you said uh, Tom has a lot of humanity in his. Act. Yeah, and I go, oh, she sees me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like that because I, I feel like um, I'm a little bougie as a comedian. I'm like, what's what do you mean by that? I'm bougie in the sense that like, um, you like a lot more highbrow. Sometimes highbrow. If you're not gonna be highbrow, give me some characters. Give me something that. If somebody else took your script, they couldn't deliver it the same way as you. Because some people are just good joke writers, right? And there's no, um, I think my I think my jokes Charisma. have layers. I think I think my jokes have layers, but also some people have. Like I was saying, even with uh, Mitch Hamburg, anybody could say those jokes, but the reason I like it is because the way he delivers it. Yeah. And so it's just like I'm not highbrow all the time. I'm not always just like you know I'm. I don't have to fucking watch like fucking Trevor Noah and like all these. You know, high rock people all the time. I like people who just run around on stage, fuck the stool and stuff. But like, get on your knees and fuck the stool. You know what I'm saying? Like, really, take me there. Do it in your own way. Yeah, That's take so take me there. And so, um, I like that, but I don't like to do because even when I talk, I talk about dating a lot, I try not to do low hang, hanging fruit. Yeah. So I like throwing extra shit. Like, the, like, well, my favorite kind of comedy is is always been like. Uh, and I like the goofy, silly shit. I love, I just, I love joke. Writers. I will say this: Adam Sandler is like my my favorite comedian ever. So I ain't taking nothing away from the goofy, silly shit. But right. nobody can do what he does. Yeah. No one. This motherfucker make up stories and sing songs and like do voices, like. Right. So it's not. You don't have to be like in so intellectual to get it. He's not talking about anybody's rights or anybody's anything. Yeah. He's talking about fucking a balloon, and yeah. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, but I've always loved comedy that you learn something from. Like, yeah. even, even if it's just something personal about the person. Like, mm -hmm. oh my God, I never would have thought in a million years that you went on some bad dates. Mm -hmm. That somebody was like, showed up broke and wanted to have Modellos at the fucking movies. Yeah. You know? You just you look at you and you think, you know, wow, you know, you're... You're hot, you're funny, you're uh, stylish. You're like, you know, oh, she suffered? They have to say, <laughs> the bar is in hell. Do you hear me? The bar is in hell. But no, I, I like uh, watching you because uh, you're, you just, you have, like, that's why I was like excited because I'm like, well, we need to write something because even some of the stuff that you know about, like the fucking people fighting people. I mean, I went to college, I don't remember a lot of that stuff. And just watching you, you're like, well, you know, over, I think you were talking about in Mexico, where if you won a fight, you could, they oh, used to go, who, oh, where? Yeah, the the Mayans. The, yeah, the, I never knew. I've game. never, I, you know how many times I've been in Mexico and I didn't yeah, know that? Really? Like, and so you're telling the audience cool things. Yeah. And it might even it, it prompt them to want to go redo some research. And I think the smartest people in the world aren't the people who know the most, but the people who 
um, have experienced the most type, different types of things. And so even just opening up the gate to that, because, I mean, we had two Hispanics on the show, and they damn sure turned by the Mayans. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, and that's I like reading shit. I like doing, you know, um, in Chichen Itza, in, it's, it's near Cancun in Mexico. Mm-hmm. I've been there twice to the ruins, the Mayan ruins. Okay. And there's this big ball field, and it's mm-hmm. where they used to play this game. It was like with a hacky sack sized ball. Okay. And then the hole, the goal is like way up on the top. You think, oh my God, how? And it's a little hole that, yeah. It, so these games would last for days. Uh huh. A shaman witch doctor would interpret what the gods meant by the outcome of the game. Mm -hmm. And the captain of the losing team would be executed. And the winning team could run into the audience and grab jewelry or any of the women that they wanted. So fucking So like I'm like when I was younger, I tried to, you know, and still I still, you know, I'll do a dirty joke, you know, but when I was younger, I didn't I was, you know, trying to get the laughs. Yeah. As I get older, I want to bring in more intelligence. Yeah. And what I have like Fascinating facts. It is a fascinating fact. I know fact. a lot of shit. Um, a lot of it, you know, is useless otherwise. If I, I, I went to... I'm glad you, that, that that hit you. you yeah. Know, you like that. I went to... Uh, mm, I don't know. Playa del Carmen, something. And I went into... You know they do the huts? And the... Have you ever been in one of those? Where you go in the hut and they do the steam and you're in there for four hours huh. and chanting, moaning and shit. No. I went on a fucking women, girls, women's work. It's called a, it's called a worthiness retreat. Worthiness retreat. For all women. Wow. I went because my friend. I could have used that two years ago. Well, it was it was for all women, but no, I like seriously, worthless. you got you. <laughs> so my friend is a life and wellness coach. She put it on. Um, it's 2021. I go. It's me and 20 women, all walks of life. We got a mom. We got. A, a college girl, we got, you know, lesbian, everybody's different, different races for all over America. Um, one lady, she has traveled to like, I don't know, 56 countries. She's like, I do these every year, every, every couple of months. And so all these different people, and we're doing therapy in the morning, yoga in the afternoon, and I'm getting fucked up at night because I don't need no word in this. I just came to hang out. So <laughs> we go into this, I think it's called a mezcal. But not like the liquor, but mezcal ceremony. And we go there and they, the, the shaman comes out and we, we all stand in a circle and we howling. And it's in the afternoon and it's hot as fuck. And he lights some, some sage and he's staging everything. And they don't like set the fire in the middle and then everybody loads up to go into this thing. Now this hut is the size of this. But it's like literally 17 women and it's a big fire in the middle mm. and the smoke is to come out. So you're supposed to like just sweat a lot. Right. Right. Or not a fire, but because you'll die from smoke inhalation. But whatever it was, the the, the smoke, the sweat, the sauna. Like a sweat lodge. Type yeah, thing. sweat lodge. Yeah. And so it's daytime, but then they close the thing. I'm claustrophobic. Mm. And also, I've, I've been on this trip with these, these I'm not going to call them bitches, but I've been on this trip with these women <laughs> for like six, five to six days now. And every time we go to dinner or have a therapy session, these bitches are traumatized. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I just filmed the series regularly. I got some money in the bank. I'm over here just trying to get fucked up. And you know what I'm saying? I'm going to Europe next week. Like, I'm just living my life. I just came out here to wear a bikini and get drunk on the beach. Right. And so they out there unloading. You know, so then we get inside and like it's you you because you're in there for four hours so long, you, you have visions, you talk to family members, you resolve things, hurts, past traumas with inside of you. So we in there, he's like, I want you to call your animal spirits, they all doing their shit. They close the fucking thing with a big boulder. I'm claustrophobic. I said, uh oh, uh 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 <laughs> No, 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 because it's pitch black now. Right. I cannot even see the person next to me. And we are all in there, and I'm like in my head, this shit about to burst in the flame. We all about to die in this hut. And I'm, because it's four hours. Like, what the fuck? So as soon as they close it, I said, uh uh-uh, uh, excuse me. I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. And they were like, are you okay? No, I can't. Get me out of here. So, all right, get me out of here. They moved the boulder. And the lady next to me, it was the woman who had been to 56 countries, was like a, a black woman in her 50s. And she's like, oh, as soon as we got in there, she grabbed my arm. She said, I could feel your energy. And this is not, you know, like this. 
And I was like, yeah, I don't like it. She was like, I'll leave with you. She was like, I do this shit all the time. So she left with me and we went to the beach and we went and got some drinks. But another reason I didn't want to be in there is because I have been in these therapy sessions with these girls. Mm -hmm. And if you want to have me sit in there sweating and they talking about releasing energy, I don't want that shit to go to me. Right. And I just was like, I would rather do that with people I know, people I love, people I trust. Because I, when you start getting into that release of energies, passing energies on, and all the other kind of stuff, I'm like, they're going to have me coming out of here fucked up with trauma from kids I don't even got. Right. So I, I got out, we went to the beach, and they all came back on the bus and busted. <laughs> and I guess healed. I that was nice the woman stepped out with you and, mm-hmm. you know, You went and got time. dinner and, and sat on the beach and drank margaritas. Wow. Well, and I got to have some one-on-one time with her, so that was fun. That was probably the best thing you got out of the retreat. No, um... The therapy sessions were good. You know, I went, I was waking up in the morning doing yoga, watching the sunrise. I knew in 2021 that my life was going to be different. Um, Cause I, like I said, that was the first time I had did a series regular. I was on TV every week. I was doing commercials. Things were starting- For the Abbott Elementary? No, no, no. For games people play on BET. Oh. Um, I, things had started changing. I just bought my car off, paid cash for it. Like things were different, but I wanted to go there to kind of like, prepare my mind for like, everybody goes to retreats for different things. I didn't want to come out of doing like these semi-famous things and still feel like me because I am evolving into a different person and I want to be like grounded as that person. I don't want it to go to my head, but I also don't want to think that I'm not supposed to be there. And so I was having conversations about my career expanding with the therapist. So that's what I got out of that. Okay, that's good. Yeah. That was probably a relief to the therapist. That <laughs> right. It was somebody not, <laughs> you know, <laughs> traumatized by kids and, yeah, you know, terrible husbands or whatever. Yeah. So that mom was just for that. Great. Well, um, Brandy, I love you to death. You're such love a good too. human being. And mm-hmm. Jesus, uh, one of my new favorite comedians now. Yay. Just love watching you. Throw your comedy thunderbolts. Thank you. Likewise. So, um, I want to say this. I told Tom while we were in Vegas, uh, um, we, we, I have t- took some pictures and videos and stuff and posted them. And every cool person I know, like not every cool person I know, but everybody that DM me about Tom, they're like, oh, fuck, you with Tom? Oh, shit, you with Tom? Tell Tom I said, hey, and they like DM me. I'm like, first of all, you don't even DM me. Like, everybody. <laughs> But they were all cool mm-hmm. people. And I was like, oh, that's a testament to you. That's good. That makes me happy. Yeah. Thank you. Very cool that. people. The cool people like me. They do. Yeah. I was like, okay, I like it, made, it made me feel cooler. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with Tom. Ha, ha, ha. I love it. <laughs> I like when you went on after me on, the, on, the, on the, a couple of those shows, you said, um, you, you remember you said. Uh-huh. You, I was like, Tom's like a, a, a cool white guy. I was like, he just get it. Like, you know, he's like the type of invite to a cookout. Like, he know, he know how to play dominoes. Like, he's like, he might have been to jail one time. He know how to make some food out of nothing. <laughs> I love that. That was so beautiful. And because you said that, I have to learn how to play dominoes now. <laughs> uh, I can't teach you. I don't know. You don't know I don't play? know. Okay. I don't know. No. You know, I have a problem with games that add too fast. I like blackjack. Okay. I, 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 I got to use my fingers and shit. I get, my mind don't work that fast. So with dominoes, I get frustrated because everybody goes so fast. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. It's 11 or 12. So it's hard. Okay. Well, I don't want to look bad at the barbecue. So. No, we'll, we'll, you, I'll teach you how to play spades. <laughs> okay. Spades, that's the game. If I teach you how to play spades... <laughs> You you definitely going up a couple of notches on the cool. You got to teach me how to play space. Yeah, though. we'll play yeah. space for sure. Okay. And um, we need to make uh, movies and TV shows we, together. We will. We will. I got the idea. Good. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, in closing, you have any words of wisdom or advice for the people of the earth? Um. Yeah. Um, you know, just I have a, a tattoo on the back of my neck. It's called "I Do What I Want," and I don't mean that in a like nasty or disrespectful way. Just do the things that you want to do. Just do the things that you want to do. If it, if it feels like you want to do it, do it. Do the hard things. Amen. Amen. Brandy Denise, long may you run, my friend. Long may you run. Pray for humanity. <laughs>